So let's start with item three, how to share good living heritage safeguarding experiences more broadly, which invites us to discuss the main issues uh, at the heart of the working group's mandate. Uh, mandate. Uh, Tim, would you introduce the next item to us, please? Thank you, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, could I ask you to please refer to working document three Document LHE slash 23 slash 18 dot com WG article 18 slash 3 rev. Uh, this document proposes various discussions, discussion points under topic one, topic two, and topic three, which is a short, short section because it concerns the any other business issues. Once again, this document should be read together with the report with the report of the Category 6 expert meeting for which we just heard, which carries the code EXP-7 or document LHE-23-18.com slash slash EXP-4. Slash So under topic one, you're invited to reflect on the ways of improving the utilization of the register of good safeguarding practices itself, both of, in terms of its accessibility as well as its visibility. The working group may wish to focus the discussion on the following three points. Firstly, the selection criteria for the uh, register. Secondly, ways to increase accessibility and visibility of the register. And thirdly, the relation of the register with the other international cooperation mechanisms of the convention. For topic two, which deals with four discussion points that are ultimately linked to the proposed creation of an online platform for sharing good safeguarding experiences. The discussion points that the working group may wish to consider here include, firstly, the pertinence of the online platform, the objectives of such a platform, some practical considerations on how it would be run, and finally, questions related to the administrative setup, financial and operational implications of such an online platform. And then finally, there's topic three, which focuses on other issues raised during the meeting of experts. And this included a discussion on additional financial resources and specific initiatives aimed at raising awareness about the scope of Article 18. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I would like to thank the Secretariat for this working document, which puts together in a concise manner the great ver variety of discussion points. Uh, may I propose to start our work with a general discussion? In this way, you shall be able to express your views of a bigger picture about a broader implementation of Article 18 of the Convention. My proposal would then uh, be to examine this discussion point proposed one by one, spending uh, about 90 minutes or whatever time we need <laughs> each time, um, anyone wish to comment on this working method? No? Okay. Um, before opening the floor for the general discussion, I would like to recall that we have many complex issues to deal with, so I will reply on your cooperation in keeping your remarks concise and pertinent, and you have managed to do that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to say the least. May, uh, may I suggest uh, that we have two minutes uh, as a speaking time for each intervention? Yes, Tim, Tim is nodding. <laughs> uh, I know that the timer is available uh, and uh, we'll use that if we start to run out of time. So, then we have the general debate. Does anyone Wants to open the want to open the debate? So Belgium, Belgium, Austria. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Oh, okay. Germany. Belgium, Austria, Germany. Okay. Please, Belgium, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you very much, and congratulations for your election as a chairperson. Uh, I want to pick up a number of points uh, from the excellent report of the very rich discussion uh, that took place in Stockholm in the expert meeting. And the first, uh, that's the report we discussed a few minutes ago. In paragraph three, uh, it was a plea to consider Article 18 not only in relation to the two preceding articles, 16 and 17, so the famous lists, but also to look uh, to the six following articles about international cooperation and assistance, so Article 19 and 24. And I think it's important to keep that in mind, to move beyond the discussion about lists and to focus on international cooperation. And that's also where the proposals, for instance, on the online platform uh, should be interpreted. A second point of three I want to make is that uh, we should take oppor the opportunity to link uh, our discussion to the newer instruments like the ethical principles and uh, the overall results framework and the new system of periodic reporting. Not only in reformulating the uh, criteria for Article 18 and the register, but also to finally activate paragraph four of the operational directives, and I, I will quote it to keep it in mind. At each session, the committee may explicitly call for proposals characterized by international cooperation, as mentioned in Article 19 of the Convention, and or focusing on specific priority aspects of safeguarding. And I think this uh, paragraph four has not been activated until now, and I think we have a nice opportunity to actually do that. And uh, also in the report, several of the operation directives were mentioned. And I would also like to mention Operation Directive 9C, where the committee can support programs, projects, and activities carried out at national, sub-regional, and regional levels uh, aimed at safeguarding the intangible culture heritage. Also, this. Uh, paragraph has not really been strongly activated. And the, the last point in this general reflection I wa uh, we want to make is that uh, in paragraph 13, the follow-up is mentioned, uh, including how to uh, look at the sustained consent of communities, groups, and individuals, and also to think about solutions on how to deal with programs that do no longer exist. Because if you look at those programs, uh, institutions uh, sometimes disappear, etc. So to have a kind of a housekeeping mechanism of those uh, elements on the register. So this follow-up mechanism, I hope we will be able to discuss about this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now we go on to uh, Austria. Austria is next on the list. Austria, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson. First, please let me express my sincere gratitude to the Secretariat uh, and the Government of Sweden for enabling this valuable exchange on such an important topic. I would like to uh, also like to extend my appreciation to the experts of the Category 6 meeting uh, who provided valuable insights into enhancing safeguarding practices, engaging stakeholders effectively and improving access to and visibility of the Register of Good Safeguarding Practices. Additionally, my thanks go to the Secretariat for the diligent efforts in preparing the necessary documents for, the, for this discussion. Our delegation welcomes this reflection on more broadly sharing uh, safeguarding practices and giving the communities a stronger voice uh, by improving their participation. We think that the central objective in all our endeavors in that is that communities and their active participation are placed at the center of safeguarding ICH. Thus, the good practice register, above all, needs to be easily accessible and visible. Then we will also be able to enhance its potential for capacity building and for serving as an inspiration for communities and for stakeholders. 
We fully agree with the discussion topics and the working methods you, Chairperson, just suggested. For us, the most important issues to be discussed in these three days are exploring alternative ways of identifying good safeguarding practices. Secondly, the question of the relation uh, of the safeguarding examples listed in the existing register to the best practices that will be brought in with a lighter way of sharing as well as the relation of the then extended register to the representative list and the urgent safeguarding list. Basically, we think that there should be no competition um, of the register with the lists and the mechanisms should be clearly separated. And thirdly, and related to point uh, to the revision of the selection criteria. We are looking forward to the discussions in the coming days and to our collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Austria. Uh, I now give the floor to Germany, please. Um, merci, le, Monsieur le Président, de nous donner la parole. Puisque l'Allemagne a l'opportunité de s'exprimer pour la première fois aujourd'hui, nous tenons tout d'abord à vous adresser tous nos remerciements pour l'efficacité dont vous faites preuve dans la conduite de, de notre groupe de travail. Euh, afin d'aboutir à des résultats que nous espérons positifs pour l'ensemble de, de parties prenantes impliquées. L'Allemagne souhaite exprimer aussi sa gratitude à la Suède pour son soutien à la réflexion, pour une mise en œuvre plus large de l'article 18 de la Convention. Nous remercions également le secrétariat et euh, les experts de catégorie 6 pour le travail précieux qu'ils ont réalisé sur ce sujet jusqu'à présent. En ce qui concerne le sujet 1, euh, améliorer l'accès et augmenter la visibilité du registre de bonnes pratiques, l'Allemagne encourage la réflexion sur l'ajustement aux critères des sélections afin de simplifier le formulaire complexe IH3 qui faciliterait l'accès aux groupes intéressés tout en rendant les informations le plus essentielles plus visibles. Nous considérons que la création d'un système d'indexation de bonnes pratiques de sauvegarde pourrait aiguiser la compréhension de bonnes pratiques de sauvegarde auprès des communautés et autres parties prenantes et renforcer la coopération internationale. Un moment, je vois juste. Euh, en outre, l'Allemagne encourage à faire davantage usage des mécanismes de coopération internationale. Par exemple, comme nous avons fait avec la proposition d'inscription, les savoir-faire des ateliers des cathédrales inscrits en 2020 au registre de bonnes pratiques. Compte tenu que l'assistance préparatoire est su utiliser, le budget étant attribué pour ce fin pourrait être appliqué pour de futurs programmes d'échanges internationaux des communautés ayant déjà inscrit des éléments au registre des bonnes pratiques du sauvegarde du patrimoine vivant. Ceci pourrait inciter d'autres communautés à soumettre une demande d'inscription au registre afin de profiter de ces échanges dans le futur. Euh, L'Allemagne considère que le partage davantage d'informations sur l'efficacité des mesures de sauvegarde après leur euh, inscription de registre est important. Néanmoins, la proposition d'inclure ces informations de le rapport périodique, qui est déjà très complet, euh, pourrait alourdir le dit rapport. Euh, le rapport actuel devrait être plutôt conçu de manière plus efficace et euh, plus ciblée. Donc, l'Allemagne se réjouit de participer à des discussions fructueuses sur ce sujet. Merci. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other participant who would like to intervene? Yes. Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brazil would like to thank the Kingdom of Sweden for supporting the process of reflection on the good practice of the Intangible Heritage Convention. This is an excellent initiative that helps to escape from the trap of lists to which our conventions are often simplified. <clears throat> we know that the nominations in the lists are important mechanisms for visibility and projection for communities, 
but such nominations must be seen precisely from this point of view, as mechanisms to support the objectives of the convention and not as ends in themselves. The reflection Article 18 allows, therefore, to invert the logic of the work, leading us to think about the frontier of the development of the convention. If 20 years ago the main challenge was to give visibility to intangible heritage, now the challenge from our point of view is to think how intangible heritage can contribute to relevant agendas of contemporary societies such as climate change, urban development, social cohesion, and multilingualism. In this direction, I note that Brazil had the opportunity to contribute with an expert to the preliminary meeting to discuss Article 18 held in Stockholm in April. We take note that the pre preliminary discussions developed under the Secretariat guidance were very productive. We hope that the meetings here will follow the same constructive and representative spirit of the perceptions of our regions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brazil. I see no other. No other one has raised their hands. Okay, uh, I see that Mexico has raised their hand. Uh, please, Mexico, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations on your election. Um, we want to uh, thank Sweden for the support for the uh, uh, reflection on Article 18 and the organization of the experts meeting. Uh, we also want to commend the work of the of the experts, and um, we uh, we support the, uh, the the comments they they made and the recommendations they made. Um, partic uh, particularly um, on the adjustment of the registration criteria that have been applied up to now for registrations in the Register of Good Practices. We think there's a lot of discussion um, to do about it. Um, and also, um, we think it's uh, necessary to establish a follow-up mechanism for description in the Register of Good Practices, not only to meet the uh, commitments as a state parties, but also to encourage the cooperation between managers or um, site uh, or element uh, managers of the registered programs or projects and government, but also with government agencies. And um, we also believe that visibility and the dissemination of the uh, actions for um, safeguard of uh, intangible are very important in all levels. And we cannot safeguard what we don't know. So it's essential uh, for us to make this uh, information and this knowledge to be shared in, at all levels, from communities to the to the main authorities in 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 the countries. And although I, uh, we think it's crucial to adjust the registration criteria as well as the ICH zero uh, three format format of the operational guidelines, and the creation of various online consultation and dissemination tools. Um, and uh, and of course we will we follow um, very close this, uh, this this debate and and participate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mexico. I have on my list Kazakhstan, and then the ICH NGO forum has asked for the floor. So Kazakhstan. Okay. So we'll start with Kazakhstan. Please. You have the Thank floor. you, Mr. Chairman. Since this is the first intervention, this is a good opportunity for my delegation to congratulate you with your election. And uh, we would like to express also thanks to the government of Sweden uh, for its generous support to the facilitating the convention implementation in, this, in the very important subjects for Article 18. Last but not least, uh, for this thankful part, <laughs> part of thanks, uh, we would like to express special thanks to the Secretariat for delivering uh, very diligent, uh, diligent analysis uh, complied with the experts recommend, uh, complied with the experts recommendations and also reference links to the previous decisions, comments and recommendations which are very useful in order to benefit from the previous good practice. This was very important. 
the subjects of the Article 18 is very important, if not to say crucial, for the Convention success in general. We fully agree that the communities should be returned to the focus of the Convention. And because all good practice or best practice, whatever you wish to name it, is with the communities, is on the ground level. And the living heritage is also on the ground level. And we need to help them how to share their expertise. And most of these communities, at least in the majority of the world countries, may not be fully capable with six official languages of UN and if we speak about two working languages of the Convention, they normally they speak in their own language. So we need to also to consider this gap, this language gap. Otherwise, we will never help them how to share their practice, their practice and their safeguarding living heritage. And if they will disappear, or the youth, like in many countries, will look more for TikTok and other things, forgetting about their traditional, their traditional heritage, we will, we will lose it, we will lose it forever. Thank you for giving me the floor for uh, such a general, general deliberations. Uh, my delegation consider the issue of this expert group meeting to be very important and has practical, as requested, practical comments and recommendations for future topics and we hope to share with them. Thank you. Thank you, Kazakhstan, for your nice and wise words. Uh, we, uh, I now give the floor for the ICH Forum, please. Uh, the ICH NGO Forum would like to thank, uh, uh, congratulate the chair on his election uh, and thank the government of Sweden for its generosity and uh, vision in, uh, in, in uh, spearheading this initiative. And we're also grateful for the opportunity to intervene and participate in this debate. Uh, the ICH NGO Forum conducted a mapping project over the course of a year where we identified scores of good safeguarding practices through interviews and surveys of 85 accredited NGOs throughout the world, uh, the majority of which were from outside of Europe and North America. And uh, one of our findings, which I'd like to suggest um, enter into our deliberations, is thinking about what, um, what safeguarding entails. So, you know, just very briefly, some of the things that it consists of, and I think this is part of the heart of the matter, it involves transmission to informal education. It involves the presentation of ICH, because through pre presenting ICH, bearers have the opportunity to keep a tradition to keep ICH going. It involves documentation and archiving, cre creating a uh, permanent record of the materials collected through ICH for the use of present and for future generations. This is an area that uh, I think uh, needs more attention within the uh, convention. Uh, it also involves practices that incorporate ICH for um, uh, uh, socially ameliorative purposes, we, we found, for example, in, in Africa and in Central Asia, that there's uh, the use of ICH uh, for, as for mediation for domestic violence. Emergency situations was mentioned as well. Higher education is also very critical for the training of practitioners, training and management of ICH as well. And uh, we uh, went through the process of identifying domains. So I think it's useful to think about what um, safeguarding entails and uh, as the um, uh, the platform is developed for sharing uh, the, the good safeguarding practices, to think about how they would be categorized with regard to these domains and, and the ones which have been utilized. Thank you for the opportunity to intervene. Thank you very much. Uh, we now I now have Saudi Arabia on the list. Please, you have the floor. 
Uh, thank you very much, Chair. We'd also like to congratulate Sweden on uh, chairing this um, session. Um, we, dis we support the recommendation of the Category 6 meeting of experts that propose, proposes the registration to be considered separately from nomination to the representative list and the urgent safeguarding list, which might result in state parties sim simultaneously submitting a proposal for the register and a nomination to one of the two lists. Um, instead of having to choose between one of two options. We understand that the global reflection on the listing mechanism concluded uh, by fine-tuning the existing system rather than drastically changing the setup of the lists and the register. However, we would like to propose the consideration of that recommendation in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Saudi Arabia. Um, I think I see no more hands raised for now. Just give me a few seconds. Okay, so, so thank you for your interventions and uh, uh, all for the, for the nice words being said. Uh, yeah. uh, we will uh, get back to a longer summary of the, uh, of the discussions now, and I will leave the floor to, to you, Tim, to introduce the next item on our agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, rather than the item, I'll introduce the first topic, and I, I would like to thank the interventions of the delegations, and uh, particularly those who, who welcomed our work. There are many issues raised, and there are many clearly expectations uh, on this reflection, so it might be helpful to now break down the specific topics and discuss them as we move on. So under topic one, the working group is invited to reflect specifically on ways of improving the accessibility to and visibility of the register itself, of the Register of Good Safeguarding Practices, which, as I mentioned earlier, since its operation, since 2000, its operationalization since 2009, has not really reached its full potential as a tool for supporting and enriching safeguarding efforts. Uh, you will remember that, uh, and you will know from the documents and remember from uh, the presentation of the experts this morning, that the, um, uh, oh, quite, an, uh, quite a few discussions were held around uh, adjustments to the existing selection criteria. And they are presented in paragraph seven of the, as they are presented, sorry, in paragraph seven of the operational directives. And this, in a way, springs or stems from a concrete outcome of the global reflection on the listing mechanisms which did recommend, and indeed uh, the General Assembly adopted, the deletion of one criteria, criteria nine. Um, but in addition, the Open Ender Working Group, in the framework of the global reflection, also recommended that a discussion on the set of selection criteria be included in this working group, in order to give state parties the opportunity to discuss the need for any further adjustment. So in a sense, this discussion on the criteria for inscription is a continuation, if I may say, of, of unfinished business, so to speak, of the open-ended working group on uh, the listing mechanisms. Of course, how it might uh, impact on other discussions or other proposals that have been made about 
the register, the relation of the register and the list can be discussed perhaps later, but in a concrete uh, form, the experts have now made proposals on specific recommendations uh, to adjust the criteria for inscription within the same vein as the adjustments have been made on the listing mechanisms of making it lighter, more accessible, more coherent, perhaps if I may also say slightly less bureaucratic. Um, so perhaps we can see on the screen this one. No, let's, no, no, let's look at this one first. So uh, this is a summary, and it's in your document, of what the experts proposed. Firstly, that criteria P1 and P3 might be merged. Um, because there, there was considered that the criteria should indeed focus on the description of the program of the activity uh, according to article, in line with Article 2.3 of the Convention as well as, as we've heard this morning, uh, other things such as the ethical principles for safeguarding intangible cultural heritage. So that this could be, the two criteria could be then merged and these things incorporated. And that would also have one less criteria uh, for, for the submitting state to fill. And of course, for the examination uh, process. Sorry, can we still have that, yes, that, yes, that thing? The second recommendation was that criterion P2 be deleted based on the consideration that some good safeguarding practices may be limited to local activities. Hence, criterion P2 may unnecessarily limit the diversity of the register when focusing on regional, sub-regional, or international levels. So the idea is also to, let's say, alleviate that requirement that um, that the, the, the programs have scope at uh, regional or international levels. I think we're still trying to get yes, the... Just one second. A we have a technical, a slight technical things getting the... I'd, I'd like them to be on. Yes, I'll, wait, I'll wait until I continue so that you can see on the screen. Okay, so the, then the criterion P2, which is proposed to be deleted, and then we go up to criterion. Could you scroll, please? Could the screen scroll? Um, uh, the, the group recommended that criterion P4 be kept, which demonstrates the effectiveness of the program, and that this should remain a requirement for selection in the register. Such a demonstration of the effectiveness should, might, might also need to include a description of the initial situation which called for the safeguarding and of the situation once the safeguarding measures had been successfully executed. Um, and this, yeah, then finally criterion five should also be kept as experts consider that the participation of communities remain a critical requirement for the selection and again, a reference to ethical principle four on free prior informed sustained and free prior, free prior sustained and informed consent of communities should be included in this criteria. And then it was recommended that criterion six could be deleted as a reference to the possibility of using selected good safeguarding practice as a model could be included in the combined criterion P1 and P3. Or if criteria six is kept, it could be adjusted as models may also be relevant at the national, national or local levels and not only at regional, sub-regional and international levels. So there's two proposals there. One is to broaden it to include the national level. The other is essentially to merge now three criteria into one, one, three and six. Criterion is proposed to adjust criterion P7 
to adjust, sorry, to refer to good practices instead of best practices as we've become used to, the language we've become used to in the context of the convention. And criterion eight is proposed to be deleted as, as that requirement for assessing the results of a selected program could be redundant because they are already referred to in criterion P4, the revision of criterion P4. So Mr. Chairperson, the working group may wish to, to discuss these uh, and request the Secretariat to present draft amendments of the operational directives uh, regarding the selection criteria for examination by the 18th session of the committee. And then if the committee so wishes, these would be presented then to the attention of the 10th session of the General Assembly in 2024. Following that, we would, as we did for the uh, other listing mechanisms, uh, adjust the forms, I, form ICH03, to take, and which would take place in the second half of 2024, so that the revised form would be available for the examination of proposals for the register under the 2026 cycle, for which the submission date, of course, is in March 2025. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you, Tim. So let's uh, open the floor on discussion on point one. Do we have any? Anyone who wants to take part in the discussion or has any questions or comments to this? Yes, Switzerland, you have a floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. À notre tour uh, de vous féliciter pour votre. Uh, fonction de président que vous menez avec brio. Euh, une, une remarque ou question de notre part euh, concernant la suppression du critère P2 et, et le fait qu'il soit combiné maintenant avec le 1, le 3 et, et le 6, finalement dans une volonté d'avoir un seul euh, élément. Il nous semble que le volet de coopération est extrêmement important et qu'il faudrait refléter ce volet de coopération dans le nouveau critère parce que le caractère modèle n'est pas la même chose que l'incitation à la coopération. Nos collègues allemands ont, ont cité l'exemple des ateliers de cathédrale qui sont un, un, un élément du registre multinational et en fait ce caractère multinational ou régional peut être extrêmement pertinent. Donc peut-être que dans la proposition qui sera euh, formulée par le secrétariat, euh, s'il y avait cette incitation à la coopération, ça serait très pertinent. Merci de votre attention. Thank you, Switzerland. Uh, I have on my list Estonia. Please, Estonia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and congratulations for your election as a chair of the meeting. Uh, Estonia would also support the recommendations of the expert meeting to work uh, on the criteria and uh, simplify them. Uh, as proposed, criteria one and three could be uh, merged, and um, uh, uh, criteria P2 and P8 deleted for the reasons already outlined. But uh, at the same time, we also believe that the interest of the states parties to submit uh, more proposals to the register is, uh, of course, linked to the existing competition between the lists and the register. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Estonia. Uh, I don't know whether we should comment on uh, um, the comment by Switzerland about deleting. Two. Yeah. yeah. Would you want to say a few words? Or? Yes. Yes. Like yes. Please, Tim. Just, just for clarity, I'm. I'm, um, I'm. I'm not clear whether you're suggesting we keep P2, or that we find somewhere else to reflect international cooperation. So I just wanted to understand that probably. So what, what we could have is a cooperation, even regional, international, reflected in a new P1, uh, probably, yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, just to clarify that. Um, yes, Belgium, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, we support the several proposals made by the expert group, but I saw flashing by a proposal of, the, of uh, already some amendments. I think it would really help us to go over them one by one, mm. uh, because I, I think someone did his yes. homework, and we can profit from that. 
<laughs> yeah, someone definitely did a homework. I can, uh, I can watch for that. Uh, uh, we, but we will get back to to um, to see the the um, the actual changes. So this is a more general debate about the, the propositions made. But but thank you. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, we, we, there has been some work on, on some proposed amendments. The thing is, whatever you decide here will not be the decision. It has to go first to the committee. The decision will only be made if there are actual revisions to the operational directors. These have also not been checked with legal affairs, but they're pretty straightforward. And we can look at them as advice, but just to clarify, that this is not the forum for, for actually adopting those revisions, but if the chair wishes, we, we stand ready to, to show them. Uh, we could uh, uh, show the proposed uh, uh, revisions on the screen, if that would be to, to clarify anything. So, yeah, particularly perhaps in relation to Swiss. Yes, to, to, uh, uh, according to the proposal from, from Switzerland. Okay, so it's, it's coming. Please, Tim. Should, should I read them out? Okay. Could we go back to P1? So this hasn't taken yet the comment from uh, Switzerland, but uh, again, this is a first draft to start thinking about mm -hmm. how this could look. Mm -hmm. So P1 could read something like the program project or activity involves Safeguarding, as defined in Article 2.3 of the Convention, reflecting the principles and objectives of the Convention. They may serve as a model for safeguarding activities. It's, it's, it's still a bit, bit vague. And then I understand from Switzerland that we should have some kind of reference here to cooperation, nevertheless, and, and to foster cooperation. Hmm. coordination and cooperation. Again, I don't know if we need to get into detailed discussions on the exact wording, but here we need to, yeah. to, to get the principles. Then the, the point is two becomes deleted, three also is deleted because we've now merged P3 to P1. We go down, P4 stays, P5 stays. We keep going down and P6 somehow merges with P1, and I'm not sure we've, we've quite got that, but I think that also responds to Switzerland's concern earlier, and we probably need to find some wording under P1 to, to, to capture that. P7 has the small change we discussed, from best to good, and P8 goes. So I think we, we would have four or five criteria now, maybe. Yeah. yeah. P6 and regional, regional international goals because the expert says also nationalism. Yeah, I know, I know. But, but, but we just heard the comment but the from Switzerland, which yeah. is also. The, yeah. Okay, Switzerland, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. En effet, dans la, la nouvelle version du P1, uh, qu'on voit à l'écran, il pourrait servir de modèle à des activités de sauvegarde. À la suite, nous pourrions ajouter l'esprit de euh, la promotion de la coordination qui était dans le, dans le P2 et de modèles régionaux ou subrégionaux que nous avions dans le P9. Donc, il y aurait la possibilité, sans, sans drafter maintenant une, 
une, une formulation concrète, ils peuvent servir de modèle à des activités de sauvegarde et okay. aider à la coordination des efforts de sauvegarde. Quelque chose dans cet esprit-là. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll work on the wording so the secretary can get back. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, it'll be a bit important because if we put and, then that becomes an extra obligation. And I think what the, what the, if I understand and I'm trying to understand, what the expert, experts were suggesting that the international dimension not be a requirement. But you're saying we don't want to lose it as well. So we want to keep, if I understand, we want to keep the encouragement of uh, cooperation, international cooperation, but not exclude safeguarding practices that may be relevant to a very specific context. So again, we don't need to get into the long discussion now, but that's why the word and could be then interpreted as it must be also. So we'll have to, to work on that. Uh, but I think we need to take note of this comment and see if there's any other. Yes, Belgium, you have the floor. So, and, uh, we do understand the proposal by Switzerland. But it's, is it the criterion or not? It's, it's the follow-up, what you can do with it. And uh, I already mentioned uh, operational uh, directive paragraph four, where there can be a specific call for these uh, proposals that support cooperation and stimulate cooperation. So I'm not sure if you have to include it in the criteria, but it definitely, definitely has to be somewhere with a strong recommendation. And, and I have also a question for that. If we look at uh, the sentence that is just before P1, that best satisfy all the following criteria, it leaves some room for maneuver. Sometimes that's useful, but it's stronger if they have to satisfy all criteria. Uh, and I'm not sure, it, do we want this room for maneuver? Or as we only have four criteria, they actually have to satisfy the criteria. So I would propose to make that a little bit stronger. So the proposal is that we should take away the best and just keep satisfied. Uh. Yeah, this is a question um, that I have in my mind, and I think that was just raised by the Honorable Delegate of Belgium, is as you know, uh, there's been, the, for, for the register of good, uh, good safeguarding practices, it has not been necessary in the past to satisfy all nine criteria. However, for the other list, it was necessary to satisfy all five criteria. Now, if we reduce the number of criteria to four, will the, the question will then be asked, and this will be um, no doubt a discussion of the committee, Will it be required to satisfy all four criteria, or do we keep that flexibility? I think that is the direction uh, of the question, and it would be interesting to hear from the room uh, on, on that issue, if I may. <clears throat> Thank you, Tim. Are there any uh, reactions from other participants? I see Peru. Just wait, wait a second if there are anyone else who would like to... Comment? I see none. Um, please, Peru. Yeah. Thank you, President. Uh, we have just a small comment regarding this uh, this proposal. Uh, we think that, uh, uh, in general terms, this this criteria were uh, conceived uh, to uh, highlight the regional and. Uh, well, the sub-regional and international level. I think it would be important, I don't know where, but it would be important to put the local level for, because for other countries, the local level is very important. Even though, even though it cannot have the visibility in international level, for the, the local communities, it is important. So I think we can imagine, I don't know how and what point, but the, the, the point, the criteria six, I don't know if, Keep it there, but in any in any in any way, if it it is possible to uh, put the the, the, the war local, if possible. Thank you. Thank you. In some way, highlight uh, the local level uh, within 
the correct paragraph. We will take a note of that. Thank you, Peru. Uh, yes, Austria, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Um, in general, we wanted to comment that we support the reduction of the criteria um, as proposed by the expert group and um, also the suggestion by our colleague from Belgium to, if there is a reduced criteria of four, to delete the word best. And um, also going back to the colleagues made by Switzerland, maybe there will be some good formulation <laughs> coming up that adds uh, to P1. That's our comment on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Austria. Anyone else who would like to make a comment on this? I th yes, I think we have a... a Czech, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Czech, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Um, on the issue of uh, the, the, the proposal made by Belgium, I am aware that our experts were, were uh, very much supporting simplifying the criteria, and it seems to me that uh, uh, when we go uh, with the simplification, which we support with the, the less criteria, but at the same time, uh, removing the flexibility in, in the introductory uh, phrase, it's not going to simplify the life of the of of the uh, those who are submitting the uh, submitting the file. So we would rather keep the text as it is, with that best satisfy. Thank you. Thank you, Czechia. Any other? Comments to this? This, okay. Okay, so we have two proposals when it comes to this. One is that we should uh, delete the word best, mm. and the other one is to, to keep it, as Czechia said, just to keep it more, more flexible. Perhaps we should try to find a wording that that's uh, or yeah, please, Tim. <laughs> yeah, no, I think your... I think this will be a, this will be a debate because yeah. I, I don't think there's another word that's going to change the issue. Either it's all four criteria, mm. or it's not, um, and 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 it stays four, but you don't need to satisfy all four. So no way has a four. So so I don't know. If, I think those are the two concepts on the table. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, we have. Norway and Belgium on the list. So please, Norway. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Let me also join in the congratulations and uh, the, and the thank you to Sweden. Um, we are also supporting the simplification, as uh, all other speakers here are doing. Uh, I don't see the difference in uh, dealing with four or dealing with nine criteria with the introduction uh, sentence. Uh, if you take away best then you are still pointing that you have to follow all the following criteria, but you could take away all, and you are the one that are, are following the best, that best follows the criteria. We can just let it stay. If it's not been a problem uh, uh, until now with eight or nine criteria, it will not be a problem with four criteria. <clears throat> Thank you, Norway. Um, Belgium, you have the floor. Yes, but our concern is to try to get some minimal credibility if if we accept a proposal that is not about safeguarding or that has no community involvement and consent i would not like to support this kind of register of good practices that has these kind of proposals on it so i i think coming with simplification it's also an attempt to keep at least this minimal credibility of of good uh, project, but I'm in your hands. I think this has been a, a topic of discussion for many years, and uh, now we have the chance also to simplify it and say it has to be about safeguarding. You have to have community consent, etc. And, and these are minimal requirements. We think.
Anyone else who wish to comment on this? Uh, I don't know, Czechia, do you have a comment to the comments? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. In fact, I think that I should reformulate the, our, the distinguished Norwegian colleague put it uh, better, uh, managed to formulate it better than I, I did. Uh, in fact, I understand that uh, even now uh, the, the, there was the request that that uh, the nominations meet all the criteria, but there is the, this qualificator the best satisfy, so we don't have all, all of them. Uh, so if it was not the problem up to now, I think that uh, it, should, it, should, it should work uh, with the simplified criteria as well. Thank you. But we, we it's, it's not uh, something we would, we would uh, uh, We will we will follow the we will follow the consensus, of course. Thank you, Czechia. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, I'll leave the floor to you, Tim. No, Tim. I, I, I think this, this issue, the, I think it's very clear. I, I, just for the sake of history, if we looked at the documents when the first criteria for the list was set up, it was decided for the representative <coughs> list and the urgent safeguarding list to have a small number of criteria for which it was compulsory to meet all of them. And for the international insistence and the register, it was decided to have a larger number of criteria, but not necessarily required to meet all of them. I do have some concerns that were raised in terms of once you reduce to the core essential for what it goes on the register, if they themselves are not no longer, because what we've found in this proposed reduction through the experts is redundancies in the criteria that were being requested. So again, I, I think this, this is this is something that's going to have to be debated more. I, don't, I, I think this reduction of criteria raises this question. Um, I don't know if there's a clear recommendation coming from this room. If it then goes to the committee, goes to the, to the uh, GA, I also think that members who have served on the evaluation body should speak up because the people, there are some people in the room who have and they understand very well how, how those decisions go in relation to assessing criteria, both for uh, the list and for the register. So, uh, you know, I, that's, those would be my comments on that. I think uh, evaluation body members would be input to this would be also valuable. Do we have anyone from the EB who would like to, to make a comment? Who has been. Who oh, has been, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Who has been on the EB? <laughs> we do, but they don't want to speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Uh, fr fr uh, see, it's from the ICH NGO forum. Okay. <coughs> please, we have the floor. Yeah, uh, good morning, and thanks again to the government of Sweden. So, we have been part of the evaluation body and for the criterion one, we think that it could be problematic to use the verb, they may serve as a model. I mean, for the evaluation of a file and to apply this criterion, it can be very ambiguous. So we are just thinking if it is good to just change the reduction of this last sentence of the criterion one of the P1. Mm -hmm. It's a minimum detail, but it can be important at the moment of the evaluation. 
May I, may I ask you if you, how you use the, the different criteria when it comes to using best or, or just uh, how important is, is that when you, when you go through each criteria for, the, for a nomination? Yeah, for, for the evaluation to say they may serve is not really, I mean, how you can evaluate this may serve or il peut servir, what if okay. not? Yes if it doesn't serve as a model for safeguarding activities, it's not a real criterion, I think, in my, in my okay. opinion, and with the experience of the evaluation body behind. Mm. I see, yes. Uh, first, I have, we have Slovakia on the on this, this. Thank you very much. First of all, we want to thank Sweden for the generous support of the discussion of the Article 18 and thank the group of the experts involved in the intense discussion in Sweden with uh, tremendous support of the Secretariat, as well as congratulations, Mr. Chairperson, for the effective and pleasant way uh, you are leading the work of this open-ended group. Uh, just a few comments in reaction we, uh, with um, yep, the members of the evaluation body. It was indeed that the evaluation body didn't look uh, at that did look at all the criteria in other uh, lists, uh, not in this particular register. And I think that coming back to uh, Tim's questions about if we should consider this criterion as obligatory to be fulfilled or not is the crucial question for the future, definitely. Uh, what we are doing now is actually deleting some criterion criteria but including the information that was included in, in this criteria into another one. So we deleted some and we merged them in P1 that uh, is now maybe causing this confusion, <laughs> well, what we are doing here now with this May and with, with this open wording kind of. So it's the question if we really merge the criteria. So we are asking from the state parties to, to do the same work practically, but uh, in maybe a more complicated way because they have to merge it into one criteria, whereas before it was uh, divided. Thank you. Thank you, Slovakia. I think you have, um, well, <laughs> I think you have a point. Yes, uh, we have the ICH and Geo Forum once again. Please, you have the floor. Uh, and Brazil, sorry. But uh, ICH, NGO firm. Uh, okay, uh, I am one with. of the, I'm Jure Nering, also from NGO uh, Workshop and Tangible Her Heritage Flanders, um, which is also one of the members of the evaluation body. The expert uh, of uh, Slovakia has already uh, answered uh, half of uh, what I would uh, say, but what I wanted to still uh, address is in that sentence of they may serve as a model uh, for safeguarding activities, I think one of the issues we should reflect upon is uh, when we uh, look at the future of, of uh, Article 18 is whether it needs to be models or we want to uh, create inspiration for others. And a model is like quite um, strong uh, approach. Uh, maybe we want to foster the a, a, a creative use of all these uh, experiences that are all over the world. Uh, and then uh, the model approach is, is maybe not the best one. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we now have Brazil on the list. Please, Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson. Brazil is also in line for the simplification of the criteria. And uh, we, we perhaps we need more, more time, more reflection to, to answer the question posed by, by the Secretary of the Convention, but one good, I think to you know to have a, a broader reflection would be uh, would have the the data regarding the the rate of success of the nominations, which means how many files have been submitted and how many have have really been approved uh, for the for the record. So we can see perhaps even with a breakdown with the criteria that has been uh, succeeded. So we can have a more, more, clear, uh, uh, more clarity on what we are discussing on this simplification. And we feel we will go in line for a single undertaking package, or, or we perhaps we can pick and choose some criteria. So perhaps the Secretary later on could reflect on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Priscilla. That's, that's doable. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, this evening we'll get, we don't have them ready right now, but we can get them this evening and, and come back with it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 
Okay, no, this one's okay. So, the next step, we will move on from this uh, from this discussion, and and we will get back with the wording later on. For, for sorry, Tim. Yes. Yeah. I think I think we've taken. I mean, this was why we hesitated a little bit to go to the wording because mm -hmm. we're preempting the discussions of. Uh, the committee and the and the general assembly. Nevertheless, it's been extremely helpful in understanding. I think some of what's going to emerge. So perhaps we can put in the report. I think uh, we can, if if you so wish, Mr. Chair, uh, the the recommend the the request from Brazil could could shed some light on how how it's been operating, and perhaps this could come back to do, to some discussion when the recommendations are being formulated of the group. Yes, that sounds like a very good idea. Uh, so uh, I suggest that we move on to the second discussion on the uh, discussion point on the topic one, which concerns other ways to increase accessibility and visibility of the register beyond the criteria. So uh, it's your turn once again, Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. So. Um, as we've mentioned, one of the issues identified in the functioning of the great register was that it had not really fully served as a source of inspiration and information for communities and other stakeholders uh, uh, seeking advice in terms of uh, or seeking inspiration for good safeguarding of living heritage. Uh, probably this issue is partly quantitative, simply because there have not been enough programs and projects uh, selected to cover a sufficiently broad range of safeguarding issues and contexts uh, to provide that useful set of experiences that people could go to. Um, there are various ways that this can be addressed, I suppose. One of the issues that was, and now I will touch on, that has been mentioned was the idea to separate the register from the lists. Uh, I must say, uh, this feels like we're reopening the debate of the reflection on the listing mechanisms, where we had intense negotiations and discussions on the capacity of the evaluation body, of the secretariat, and of the committee to absorb all these selection uh, processes, and the proposal to set up a new <laughs> parallel mechanism I think uh, would impinge quite heavily uh, on what was on what was discussed in the in the um, in the open-ended working group and the limits on the number of files that can be treated. Um, so I just wanted to flag that, um, even though the idea is nice, I have concerns about its feasibility uh, and the realism. So that. Perhaps in understanding when discussing Article 18, we do have to understand it in relation to, to the broader convention. Um, but one of the ideas I think that was extremely interesting that came from the expert group was that in order to characterize safeguarding approaches and their effectiveness, uh, we could introduce an indexing system for analysis and presentation of the good safeguarding practices included in the register. And that way, uh, various stakeholders could, could uh, access and more easily research, understand, and apply the various approaches that were used. And that seems to me something that, that is feasible and, and that could be done in, in a first step and that could then perhaps also um, contribute to uh, the item number two being the platform. So I just want to say that. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I now open the floor for uh, discussion uh, on, on discussion point number two. Do we have any comments to that discussion point? Estonia, China. Okay. So. So we have uh, Latvia and then China. Thank you. 
On behalf of Latvian delegation, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairperson, for giving us the floor. Latvia considers the sharing of safeguarding experiences being an important aspect of the implementation of 2003 Convention. And therefore, we are pleased to participate in the exchanges of this open-ended intergovernmental working group. And we are thankful for the Kingdom of Sweden for supporting this reflection process. Regarding discussion point two, Latvia believes that the accessibility of the International Register is uh, closely linked to the processes of implementing the Convention at the national level. Therefore, we would wish to express our support to encourage state parties to create registers of good safeguarding practices at the national level. This also may raise awareness about the interest in sharing such experiences and also further uh, encourage proposals of such practices to be submitted at the international level. We also suggest that for the purpose of raising awareness about various approaches uh, for safeguarding intangible cultural heritage, information on national in inventories that include selection of good safeguarding practices should be presented on the possible online pr platform for sharing good safeguarding experiences. Thank you. Thank you very much, Latvia. Uh, China, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président, de, de, me donner, de me donner la parole. Mais tout d'abord, je vous félicite pour votre élection comme le président de, de notre groupe de travail. Et la Chine souhaiterait souligner qu'il euh, qu est important que le registre doive être euh, comment, euh, examiné de manière, sépa, de manière séparée des candidats des, des deux listes. C'est juste notre... Euh, notre proposition, on est, on est d'accord euh, avec euh, la, la recommandation formulée par euh, le groupe de travail des, des experts. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, China. Um, okay. Uh, Belgium, you have the floor. Okay. The discussion about visibility of the register is also the housekeeping. Because on the register, if you look at it today, there are several dossiers there that actually do not longer exist. If you try to contact the persons, the organization behind it has disappeared. So we should be able to, to see to what extent the information provided on the register is still active, if you can still obtain it. And it's partly linking up to the discussion of the online platform. But I do think we should have some kind of an evaluation and perhaps also an elegant exit of elements if, if it's needed. So this is part of this visibility part of it. What should be extremely visible, visible contactable, etc., et and something more for documentation. So we can, might start to reflect on this. And uh, we've closed down the discussion point one. I hope in the end we can perhaps uh, come back because I think don't think our work is quite finished. Uh, and in the document in in eight point C. It refers to uh, this kind of follow-up and uh, trying to describe the situation when it starts and then the, the situation after it has been executed. Perhaps that should also be part of uh, what this register is about. So my plea is, can we start discussing about housekeeping the register and making the distinction between still active uh, programs and programs that are actually part of an archive. Thank you. Thank you, Belgium. Thank you. Uh, yes, the NGO forum has 
raise their signs, so please. The floor is yours again. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to support I mean, the comments from Kazakhstan earlier about the language. I mean, the, the, the register is in English and French, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, I am from Latin America, and during Latin America, less than 5% of the population in Latin America speaks English or French. So if you want the communities to access the register, something should be done with the language. I mean, you have eight working languages, so something has be, needs to be improved in that matter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Tim, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, just to remind that a decision has already been made, and it concerns the register in the reflection on the global listing mechanisms, that all nomination files submitted may be submitted on top of English and French. We still need English and French for the evaluation body process and for the examination process. But as of this year, we can receive files in any language of the community, and those files will go online. We will not check them, we will not verify them, um, but we will make them available so that communities can actually read the files, the nomination files in their own language. Um, this has already been decided, so it will also apply to uh, good safeguarding practices that are submitted. So I think it's already taken care of. In as far as we can manage, you will understand we obviously cannot manage translation in all the languages of the world and, and all the different community languages, but we can put them with a disclaimer that this is not UNESCO <laughs> verified content, but we can put them on the, on the web page with the file so that communities may access them. And that will happen as of, as of this year, as of this cycle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Perhaps we should uh, move on. I think we had a productive discussion on point number two. And uh, I will uh, come back with a summary of the main points when we reach the end of discussion on topic one. Uh, now we'll start the discussion on point three, relations with international cooperation mechanisms of the convention. This deals with the relations of the register with other international cooperation mechanisms of the 2003 convention. Uh, an increased access to and visibility of the register could also be achieved through the promotion of activities focusing on capacity building, experience exchanging and sharing, and awareness raising. The preparation of proposals for selection as good safeguarding practices could be supported by accredit accredited NGOs and by community representatives with successful experiences in this area and could be comp complemented by guidelines and capacity building materials to increase accessibility for communities. One possible approach could be to co-finance such efforts to prepare, implement and follow up on proposals. In this regard, it's worth noting that paragraph 2 of the Article 18 and Operational Directives 21 to 23 provide that state parties may request preparatory assistance for the elaboration of proposals for selection in the register. The amounts of the requests are normally in the range of uh, 5,000 US dollars to 10,000 US dollars, and they are typically for the purpose of conducting community consultations, preparing audiovisual materials, or uh, covering administrative or logic, uh, logistical costs related to the preparation of proposals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no. 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 I'll, I'll finish it up. Okay. This possibility, however, has not often been utilized by state parties, and the international assistance mechanisms remain underutilized for the purposes of Article 18. 
In addition, in order to realize and harness the full potential of Article 18, it may also be relevant for the working group to reflect on the usefulness of setting up a follow-up and monitoring system for the register. In order to learn about post-selection experiences, it would be pertinent to reflect on, on whether and if so how information and follow-up and monitoring could be integrated in the periodic reporting framework. Given the already extensive scope of periodic, um, sorry, periodic reporting exercise, which requires reporting states to answer so many questions, we need to be cautious not to make the system heavier. For this reason, it would be pertinent to engage researchers to pursue these endeavors. Furthermore, the periodic reporting mechanisms, and in particular forum ICH-10, could be revised to encourage state parties to give updates and actions undertaken in the implementation of Article 18. Uh, this was from your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I took the part from your script, Tim, but uh, I hopefully I, uh, I summarized it quite well. Okay. So, uh, with this introduction, um, let's open the floor for discussion on, on point three, uh, if there are any. Belgium. Ah, you have the floor, Belgium. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think there are many possibilities here, and uh, as I mentioned uh, two hours ago, uh, I would like to specifically uh, uh, point out three things. On the one hand, the already existing Operation Directive 9.C, that the committee can approve uh, requests uh, for uh, and also for financing to support programs, projects, and activities carried out uh, under uh, Article 18. And I think it has not uh, strongly been used. I know the, the funds are limited, but perhaps it's possible to imagine a system of co-financing or calls of uh, international uh, projects. So, so I think it's, it's, it's a whole avenue to explore. The second point I, I want to make is, is uh, linking it up with international cooperation mechanism. I think uh, the overall results framework, it's a very powerful instrument. We are all doing the exercises of submitting very substantial periodic reports. This yields an enormous amount of information. And uh, in a few years, we will have the whole uh, global cycle conducted. There's a year of reflection there, and it would be a, a possibility to conclude an analysis of all those reports and to see what kind of safeguarding programs do we actually need, for instance, on sustainable development and for others. And that's a way to uh, activate uh, the Operation Directive number four, where the committee can explicitly call for programs and projects around specific priority uh, aspects or uh, proposals for international cooperation. And, and I think it would be useful to try to link the overall results framework, the global exercise of doing periodic reports, and then going for calls to please submit interesting examples to uh, this register of Article 18. It would be an active way for the committee to actually invite countries and, and stakeholders to propose something. So it could be a mechanism that, uh, that might be activated, I think. Okay, thank you. And I hope someone will react to that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Belgium. We'll see. Uh, Latvia, you have the floor. Latvia joins the interest expressed in learning about post-selection experiences concerning the selected safeguarding practices and their impact after the selection. Therefore, we would support finding a space for sharing such experiences through the periodic reporting mechanisms. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 
we have uh, Brunei Darussalam on the list. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, congratulations to you as Brunei Darussalam is yet to send its own nomination um, to this uh, register and, and to the ICH convention and part of the uh, international community uh, visibility. Uh, the consideration of this article is very important where strong role is placed for communities and individuals. We also agree with the recommendations by the expert working group. Um, as per accessibility and visibility of the register, uh, I come back to item number two, sorry for this uh, late intervention. The register has helped us in learning the processes and good safeguarding practices. And um, as far as, as number three, uh, in relation to the international cooperation mechanism, Brunei Darussalam is also a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, known as ASEAN. ASEAN and UNESCO has signed a cooperation agreement in 2013. So as a suggestion, uh, uh, is it possible to tap on the existing MOUs between UNESCO and other international cooperation mechanisms? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Brunei uh, Darussalam. Uh, do we have any other one who would like to comment? Yes, uh, Tim. Sorry, if you... Uh, I see no other hands raised. Tim, you would like to comment on the... Yeah, just, the latest, just uh, I mean, there's... Um, on the second point, uh, there's, in principle, no problem at looking at existing frameworks and MOUs for including also good safeguarding practices. Although, of course, we have to see what, what were established, but the, I don't see why that's not a poss possibility. Um, certainly, linking Article 18 to the following articles on, on assistance is very interesting, and I think there's all sorts of ways that could happen. I do have, and I understand the uh, desire and the the, the let's say, the, the interest and the, the usefulness of the follow-up mechanisms uh, related to periodic reporting. But as was said, I think it might be wise to wait on the reflection year once the periodic reports have been done across the world. We are, we are still in the phase of doing that. Uh, last year, we worked with all the Arab states. This year, we're working with the African states. Next year, will be Asia and the Pacific. Um, oh, but you, we've had a lot of complaints about the heaviness of the report and uh, the volume of reporting. And UNESCO is also working towards joint reporting across all the conventions so that we can really start having data on, on the, of culture on, on, the, on the joint scale. So it's a great idea, but we have to think carefully on how this impacts the overall reporting whether it comes on top, whether it means something else gets taken off, or how that would happen. And I think, as was mentioned, uh, there, there is a reflection year on the reporting, and that would be probably the best time to, to look at how to, to adjust that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Belgium, you have the floor. I, I do understand, but... Uh, the plea is to not just use that year for reflection, but also for action, and to connect it to Article 18. Otherwise, we lose another five years. And so when we have this reflection year, we will consider all those wonderful proposals, all those programs from all over the world, thousands of pages. And these experts and, and others, they will be able to uh, either identify very interesting uh, programs and we want more of them, or things that are not addressed at all, and we also want those. And to, to use that reflection uh, year to introduce this, and this would help actually uh, activating the overall results frame, framework, which is a theory, part of the theory of change. And so this is a dynamic model, and this is a way to, uh, we haven't really thought about how we will activate the overall results framework. And this might be a possibility to activate it. So to transform the year of not only reflection, also a year of action. Thank you. Thank you, Belgium. Uh, Brazil, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Chairperson. Um, we, we do see uh, a merit on the idea of having the good the following up mechanism to the good practice uh, mechanism. But uh, uh, perhaps this uh, leads us to the question raised by our colleague from Belgium in the, the last item regarding the duration of the good practice. Uh, with the good practices registered in this uh, in this list or even in this, the future platform, should be just the current ones, or also the the the, the other ones that are not current anymore. We would be more in line for the second option because uh, the two projects that Brazil has at this moment in the good practice list they don't occur anymore. But we do believe that they are important as a record, as a rest for um, not just future generations, but perhaps other countries that have the, the same uh, problems, the same uh, context, could, ha could use this, this good practice. But it would be impossible to have a following up mechanism on this part because they, they uh, don't are current anymore. So perhaps we should, should uh, have a, a, an approach with just these two items together, but um, we, we do see a merit on this proposal. We just need to perhaps to reflect a deeper uh, on, on, this, on this idea. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Um, I don't know. Tim, do you want to comment further on, the, uh, on this? Uh, no, I, 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 I hear fully what's being said. I, I, the only limit is, is you know, how much we can do with, with the tools we have and where do we prioritize, what is the priority over what else, um, because not everything can be done. So I think part of this working group is also mm. trying to prioritize what is the most important, what needs to be done, and, and in what sequence, because, because I think that's important. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. I see no other hands raised. What I would like to do now is to, uh, to uh, start the session um, this afternoon with a summary of the, uh, of the discussions, if that's doable. We have 15 minutes left. Mm -hmm. do we, what is, or do you... So, dear delegates, uh, the meeting will now pause for a lunch break to uh, 2.30. Uh, the Bureau will meet uh, in room 7. The Vice Chairpersons from Estonia, let me see if so I have the correct, it's Estonia, Peru, <coughs> the Philippines, Angola and Morocco. Please be there on time so we can uh, begin promptly. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier on, this is a private meeting. This room will remain open during lunchtime, so please do not leave your personal belongings. Uh, I wish you a pleasant break. <laughs> please be back at 2.30 p.m. for the afternoon session. Thank you.